On the chilly morning of December 21, 1970, Elvis Presley and two bodyguards walk up to the northwest gate of the White House. The men give a handwritten letter to a security guard requesting a meeting with the president. The letter is quickly taken inside where Nixon aides look it over. It reads, Dear Mr. President, First, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Elvis Presley and admire you and have great respect for your office. The drug culture, the hippie elements, the SDS, Black Panthers, etc. do not consider me as their enemy or as they call it, the establishment. I call it America and I love it. Sir, I can and will be of any service that I can to help the country out. So I wish not to be given a title or an appointed position. I can and will do more good if I were made a federal agent at large, and I will help out by doing it my way through my communications with people of all ages. First and foremost, I am an entertainer, but all I need is the federal credentials. I will be here for as long as it takes to get the credentials of a federal agent. I have done an in-depth study of drug abuse and communist brainwashing techniques, and I'm right in the middle of the whole thing where I can and will do the most good. I am glad to help just so long as it is kept very private. I would love to meet you just to say hello if you're not too busy. Respectfully, Elvis Presley. Elvis's letter is delivered to the desk of Bud Krogh, the head of the White House's anti-drug initiatives. Bud invites Elvis back to his office, and after talking with him about the fight against drugs, he finds that the king is sincere in wanting to help. Bud types a memo to the White House Chief of Staff Bob Haldeman, requesting a meeting with the President. Haldeman okays the visit, writing a personal note on the memo. You must be kidding. The meeting is set. Bud calls Elvis and asks him to return to the White House a little before noon. In his office, Bud Krogh types out a list of talking points for the president. It includes statistics on drug abuse and information about the recent deaths of Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin. Bud envisions several projects for Elvis, such as a TV special where Elvis shows parents how popular songs glorify drug culture, the development of a rock musical with the theme Get High on Life, or the recording of a live album with the theme Get High on Life. Just after 11.30 a.m., Elvis and his bodyguards return to the White House's northwest gate, but the Secret Service won't let them in. Elvis has brought a gun with ammunition, a gift for the president. After surrendering the weapon, Elvis is allowed in, assured the president will get the gun later. Presley meets up with Bud Krogh once again, and at 12.30 they are ushered into the Oval Office. Elvis enters in grandiose style, wearing tight purple velvet pants, a shirt open to his chest, gold medallions, and a purple velvet cape. President Nixon, dressed in his gray suit, rises from behind his desk as Bud announces, Mr. President, this is Elvis Presley. Bud watches as Elvis shakes the president's hand. Hello, Mr. President. Elvis starts the meeting by sharing his family portrait, along with some police badges he's collected. Priscilla, Lisa Marie, my badges. I really support what our police have to do. After admiring the collection, Nixon asks Presley to pose for an official picture. After the photos, Elvis pulls up his sleeve and shows Nixon his cufflinks. The president is duly impressed and listens as Elvis shares his experiences performing in Las Vegas and his opinion of the Beatles. The Beatles, I think, are kind of anti-American. Then he adds, I've been studying communist brainwashing for 10 years now and the drug culture too. Trying to get the meeting back on track, Bud emphasizes Presley's influence with the public. I do my thing just by singing, Mr. President. I don't make any speeches on stage. I just try to reach them in my own way. I can go right into a group of hippies and young people and be accepted. This can be real helpful. Nixon nods. Well, just be sure you don't lose your credibility. Elvis blurts out. Mr. President, can you get me a badge from the Narcotics Bureau? 
Nixon turns to Krog and asks him if that's possible. Bud replies that it's the president's decision. See that he gets one. Elvis, overcome with emotion, bear hugs the president. Thank you very much, sir. This means a lot to me. Elvis asks Nixon if his bodyguards can say hello. Then Sonny West and Jerry Schilling are invited in. Oh, I see. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I see. A few hours later, Elvis gets his coveted badge from the BNDD, a predecessor of the DEA. Though Elvis had wanted to keep his White House visit a secret, on January 27, 1972, the Washington Post's Jack Anderson publishes a column unveiling the Oval Office visit. This is the first the public hears of the now infamous meeting, but certainly not the last. The same can't be said of Elvis's anti-drug work. Now that he had his badge, it's the last the administration hears of the singer, who also goes on to forever deny his country his vast communist brainwashing expertise. Though their meeting lasted less than an hour, the glory of this odd event lives on, as the photo of the King of Rock and Roll and the President of the United States shaking hands goes on to become the most requested item from the National Archives, beating out even the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights. This is when Elvis met Nixon, and that's history. Thank you.